everybody, good morning to you. I'm very excited because we are talking to you straight out of the Walcott House. So you know it's an iconic landmark right here in Castries. And I have a good friend of ours representing for the National Trust. So we have Coretta, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Good, well I'm super excited with this initiative. Some students are very fortunate to be having a history tour with one of our very own, and trust me, we have to hold him at high esteem, Mr. Gregory Williams. So first of all, Coretta, before we get into all of that, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm spending time with the children and they're learning, so it's an awesome day. Great. Now, is this the first time something of this nature is taking place? Not at all. The Trust has, over the years, engaged students in numerous tours and heritage events, but this specific one is special. It should have been held last year in observance of World Heritage Day, mm -hmm. um, which had the theme Heritage for Generations. But because Herit um, World Heritage Day is observed in April, close to Holy Week, it was difficult to get the students who would have already been on um, their Easter break, so the, the teachers suggested that we reschedule, but the, our kind friend at Foster and Inns, they were sponsoring the party bus for this, so we didn't have to pay. We were really grateful to them for that, so we had to wait until the cruise season was um, slowing down, and hence the reason we're having it right now. Well, you know, as they say, better late than never, you know? Exactly. And I think this is very important as well, especially with the forms, the ages. You know, they're currently studying history, and it's, I feel, very important that we dive right in and zero in on our history specifically, too. And I know this is something that you all at the National Trust really strive to do, not only educating, but preserving what we have here. Right? Today, essentially, it was a tour of castries, and Dr. Gregor Williams, as you pointed out, was our tour guide. So he has a wealth of knowledge, and it was great going around on bus. You know, you got a nice vantage point instead of walking, but you, had, you were elevated. So as he spoke, you were seeing the images of what he was talking about. And he brought us around Castries, the church, where you had um, the, the Coca-Cola factory and the history behind things that we probably didn't even know before. And what you just passed by daily. But he really gave us, you know, what was there before and how the landscape has changed. And after that, we went to the archives where we had a tour. They were kind enough to give us a tour tour and we saw some of the images of Cast the Castries um, fire, what it looked like before the fire, um, sorry. And we're here at Walcott House now. They got a, a tour, a brief tour of Walcott Place and this, the history behind the house and Derek, Roderick, their mother, you know, and essentially his contribution, not only to us, but to the region and the wider world. And then they're culminating by watching a film on the Castries fire that was produced last year um, in observance of the 70th anniversary. So it was really amazing to see the reactions and to hear the questions of the students. And one of the questions I asked them is, you know, based on what Dr. Williams said and what you're seeing, 15 to 20 years from now, what changes in the landscape do you expect to see? And some spoke about transportation. Some spoke about the possibility of some of our um, resources being um, destroyed because of abuse. You know, some said maybe because um, a lot of our land was reclaimed and built on, um, maybe it will be destroyed, maybe the waters will come back. So they, had, they were very interested in some of the things and concerns that they raised. It really leaves a lot for us to, to ponder on and maybe they will in the future give us solutions to some of these issues. Now, you know what's really interesting is to see how much they were engaged because for them to be critically thinking this way, especially for the future, this really shows that they are learning and they're taking it in and it's it's challenging them. And I feel like at the end of the day, this is exactly what we want to achieve. Not only just, you know, continuing the legacy, making sure we know our history, but of course we have to think about the future. So I feel like initiatives like this need to continue. So we have to say a special thank you again to, as you said, the friends at Forster's Inks for, you know, putting this on because I feel like it's a very hands-on approach, very engaging so it's making history fun exactly and we want to have many more schools because today we have a small section from Leon Hess, Bocage and St. Joseph's Convent because they're all in close proximity to each other and we have um, their teachers at least a teacher from each school so we want to have other schools inside of Castries and outside Castries as well coming in to learn the history so that's our intention and we're hoping that we can continue to partner with Foster Inns to ensure that that takes place because because we have to ensure that our youngsters know their history, what issues arose in the past, and what are some of the solutions that we need to start thinking about to ensure that we don't have them repeated. So you know, on that note, St. Lucia, what I want to say, anybody who's watching, be it parents, teachers, students, 
pitch the idea, schools take advantage of this. You know, maybe it might not follow the same format, but the Walcott House is here, the movie is there. I know I need to come and see this. So there's a lot for us to experience. So let us make history fun, let's make learning fun. And of course we have our friends here at the National Trust helping to support that. So feel free to reach out to them if you want to coordinate and organize. And of course I feel we should leave at least a contact number so that way the schools and anybody watching knows how to reach. Um, our website is www.slunatrust.org and you could check us out on Facebook by just typing Saint, S-A-I-N-T, Lucia National Trust and our office number is 452-5005 our office in Viewfort, the number is 454-5014 so you can reach out to us um, via social media and we've asked the students participating today to take photos and tag the National Trust and I'm hoping that they will do this and so that their friends will see that it wasn't a boring day but it was an exciting day filled with a lot of um, knowledge so you know what, they're making history fun. So we got to know our history. As they say, you have to know your past, know where you're going. So thank you so much, Coretta. And I want to say thank you to the National Trust, to Foster's Inks, and of course, people, let's take advantage of this and continue to make learning fun. Wake up and good morning to you, good people. This morning has returned, and I am Chela Mendez. Now, I have some friends from very close by. I wouldn't say all the way from Barbados, because like I said, it's very close. So we have Glenn here, and I have Portia. So first of all, Glenn, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing great, and welcome to St. Lucia. Thank you. <laughs> Super, and of course, Portia, I am loving the hair color, Thank just you. saying. And My welcome sisters. to St. Lucia. <laughs> I know, right? So, you know, this is just giving me some life, and I know you guys are here for an important reason. It's going to be a nice business exchange, entrepreneurs. So first of all, Glenn, I'll start off with you, so you can give us the full score, and of course, keep St. Lucia in the know. So let us know what's taking place. Well, BIDC Barbados Investment Development Corporation, we have a, a program called Export Readiness where we look for um, viable, scalable entrepreneurs who want to take the leap into export. Um, so we are here in St. Lucia so that they can build some relationships, um, explore any strategic alliances, um, maybe joint ventures, so that they can grow their product, spread their product, and enable them to skill their businesses as well. I think it's important that from Barbados to St. Lucia to the Caribbean that we open up opportunities for individuals to um, see how best that they can grow their businesses and make partnerships along the way as well. Great. Now with that, um, how long has BIDC been around? We're about 64 years old. Mm -hmm. So we've been around for a Very long well time. <laughs> yes, uh, we're the only agency in Barbados that are primarily responsible for exports, either micro businesses or macro businesses. Um, so we seek opportunities, as I said, just not for only export, for building relationships throughout the region and the diaspora and beyond. Great. Now, one thing I can let you know is right here in St. Lucia, entrepreneurship is definitely booming. It is what a lot of people are going into now, and we're seeing so many people coming up with such creative ideas. So I have no doubt that you all can find and tap into some interesting, you know, small businesses coming up. And sometimes that's what they need, the guiding hand, you know, the networking and people to help, you know, let them know how they actually take this from a small scale and actually, you know, think of opening it up to other markets. So I think that is also important. Very much so, um, especially with the Caribbean economies underperforming at the present time. It's very important that we look to tap into the resourceful um, individuals and help them to understand that it doesn't necessarily have to be government or private sector to give them an opportunity. They can create that themselves, but more importantly, how they can build on that for their gener for this generation and next generation to come, um, to leave a legacy. And, and that's, that's critical for the development of the Caribbean um, so that we can also either substitute our imports by homegrown stuff um, or look to export to beyond the Caribbean as well. And you know, that's just how growth starts. Now, speaking of that, I mean, we're seeing it and we have somebody who's living proof of this growth and expansion. So we're going to come over to Portia. So I, I did not forget you. That's this right. is going to be your time to shine. And you have amazing products. I know it's natural as well. And yes. it's Imoro, correct? Yes. Um, the brand is called Imoro. It's the Arawakan word for the color green. And we are a green brand. We formulate products for the professional spa industry. So we cater to 
um, local spas as well as regional spas. We offer private labeling services and we can produce signature products for your spa as well so you have your signature scent or signature fragrance that you use throughout your treatments. We cater to the end user as well so if you want to take home that spa experience you can do so through the retail end of products and we offer a line of personal care products as well. Nice. Now how did you come up with this? Where did this begin for you? I have a background in spa wellness over 26 years yes. as a therapist and also spa manager. Um, was here in St. Lucia three years ago um, training under the Sandals brand because they would have opened a branch in Barbados. Mm -hmm. So I spent three weeks here but I'm a uh, avid visitor to St. Lucia on a frequent basis as I told a taxi guy this eat, um, this morning <laughs> I am Lucian and he looked at me like are you crazy <laughs> not with that accent no, but you know what you're mm. Lucian in the heart That's what yes matters. I am I have a love for the people and our brand aims to promote the Caribbean where we use raw materials from across the region we get um, coconut oil from St. Lucia um, cocoa beans as well as the cocoa that you use to make tea mm -hmm. we use that in our product as well as well as seaweed and other raw materials from here locally so we do incorporate the Lucian vibe into our mix as well that's right now you see that's what I'm talking about so you can see there the, partnership the integration there, there. Yes. And, and I'm really loving that now I know you have different lines so just tell us about a few of the products um, last night we launched our one of our new and exciting products our shampoo bars this is a bar that's not a soap but it's specifically pH balance for the hair. Um, it leaves the hair nice and soft and bouncy. Um, it can be sold package free so we're trying to go eco-friendly as well and eliminate our carbon footprint. So we are in the process of repackaging some of our items so that they can be more user-friendly towards the environment. So how can persons you know find out more or get your products? Okay, um, we've also launched our website last night as well, and it's www.imorotherapy.com. We're also on Instagram and Facebook as well with the handle Emorotherapy. So before we wrap up, I have to come back to Glenn because you know what, calling all of our entrepreneurs, there's still more happening. So I know this activity is slated for today. So just let us know what is left on the schedule. Well, um, last night we had a cocktail reception for stakeholders in, in, in the industry, stakeholders from St. Lucia. Well, again, we brought nine business people from Barbados to St. Lucia. So they get to speak to the insiders who have the knowledge of the local market. Um, so after that, tomorrow, later in the, tomorrow, we will also be visiting buyers as well to engage with buyers to see how best we can also incorporate our, our products and services in the St. Lucia market. Great. So if um, you know fellow entrepreneurs here in St. Lucia want to reach out, um, you know, and touch base with you all at BIDC, how are they able to do so? So they can reach me, um, Glenn and Ashby at um, gashby.org, uh, bidc.org. So that's gashby at bidc.org. Um, so that we can also extend our, our arm to assist them to come to Barbados as well. All right, perfect. So you know what? It's all in a day's work, St. Lucia. Don't say you're not informed. This is one of the things we aim to do here on the show. We always say we wake St. Lucia up in the know. So now you're in the know. Come out here. Take advantage of what is available. We have amazing products as well. So, you know, it's one Caribbean love. Let us support it. And, of course, this is the time to take that bold step if you want to take your business into that other level, a new direction. Feel free to reach out. And until then, we're all wishing you a great day. So hopefully we'll see you guys later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, family. Are you ready for more of this morning? Well, guess what? Are you aware of the Education USA Center? This is located right here in St. Lucia at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. And earlier this week, we were able to catch up with some friends who will give us the full score of exactly what happens there. 
Good morning to you, St. Lucia, and welcome back to This Morning. Of course, you know I'm Shayla Mendes, but today we are up at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, and we are at Education USA Center, and it's a learning process for me. They've been here for about five years, but we'll see if I have my facts right. We have a very special guest today. So we have Mr. James Rodriguez. He is the Public Affairs Officer. How are you today? Great. I'm doing great. I'm in St. Lucia. I can't complain. I know, right? All right. It's beautiful. The view from here. It's Outstanding. I, I just, I, wow. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I, in shock. I think that sums it up really well. And of course, that's what we want to do. Wake you up with the good vibes and of course, keep you in the know. So I was left in the dark, but we're going to make sure St. Lucia and beyond knows about the center here. So tell us a little bit about the background and what you guys do here. Okay, wonderful. Well, um, we have an Education USA advising center here at the uh, Sir Arthur Lewis uh, Community College. And what the idea behind it is to give students the information they need to pursue their studies in the United States. And it includes everything from identifying the college. We have more than 4,500 accredited universities in the United States to the finding the finances for it, because there are a lot of scholarships for um, Lucians that want to study in the United States, all the tests you have to take, um, the visa process, and finally, that last step when you get on the airplane and you move to one of those cold weather states up north in the United <laughs> States. Oof. Yeah, it's a total 360 for us. Oh yeah, I think, um, I, and I think that's something that people fail to take it into, to take into account is the weather, because, you know, if you're not good in the cold, avoid Minnesota. Stay in the <laughs> southern states, right? <laughs> yeah, that's our tip for the morning so far. There you go. There you go. So, yeah, you're not going to wake up in St. Lucia where it's snowing. You know, it's just snowed two feet, but that will happen if you're in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. for sure. The advising center is kind of your one-stop shop um, for a potential student in the United States. They can find all the information they need there. Uh, we have tons of books. We actually have an advisor here in St. Lucia that you can um, set up an appointment with and he'll uh, sit there and explain to you the process because it's not always the easiest and it's an intimidating process I think for a, a lot of potential students they worry that do I have the right grades mm -hmm. uh, am I really going to be able to afford a four-year college in the United States right. um, and even in some cases where you have a student athlete there are great athletes in St. Lucia and there are universities that would be super interested in having them uh, compete at the university level for them on their behalf. So um, we also advise uh, potential student athletes about what their options are when they get to the United States. Um, and then on top of that, we also tell people about some of the other initiatives and programs that we have at the embassy. So we have um, the Young Leaders of the America Initiative. Mm -hmm. This is a program where we take young entrepreneurs from St. Lucia and send them to the United States. and. I will tell you that the talent and the potential is absolutely here. I, I know this because we sent a young St. Lucian to the Young Leaders of the Americas Initiative, and they had a pitch competition where all the um, participants had to do their elevator pitch, and they chose a winner. There were 250 entrepreneurs from Canada all the way down to Argentina. The winner was a Lucian. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, I know. So I, I can tell you that, you know, I'm really proud of myself. We did a good job. I'll pat my own <laughs> back choosing the participants. But the potential is here, and we just have to find it and uh, help it grow. Um, so another program is the Youth Ambassadors. That just opened, uh, the application process just opened last week. So, yes, yeah, so what we're looking for is 15 to about 18-year-old students that will have one more year of secondary school when they return. Mm -hmm. um, and what the program does is it takes them um, to the United States. They're there on about a three-week uh, program, and they learn leadership skills. They learn networking skills. They learn how to deal with different situations, and they bring all these skills back to St. Lucia and they use them in their community. We actually, part of the program is to do a community project when you return. You know, one thing that's really, really interesting about this, um, of course, location to me of the center is ideal because this is a pivotal moment. You know, a lot of students here at Sir Arthur Lewis Community College are looking to further education. Mm -hmm. I mean, 90% of the times we are looking at the U.S. or Canada and most people are looking at the U.S. So you need that stepping stone because I remember when I was looking to go study 
it was difficult. You are a little bit nervous. Am I choosing the right school? Um, you know, and then of course accreditation comes up because you have right. to be careful. And so I feel like, you know, with you all being here, it's like somebody holding your hand and giving you that guidance that you need at this important point. And, and that's absolutely right. That's the role that we want to play. We want more Lucians to study in the United States because you bring something to the university that we cannot get into in the United States. You bring that different viewpoint. You know, you, it's a different culture. It's a different way of living. Um, everything's different. And this is a valuable commodity to a university because a university to the average American represents the place where you come and you're, you experience, you're exposed to new ideas and new people. Um, and that's where you are a valuable commodity. So what I always tell students is, everybody seems to think, oh, not me. I could never win this competition. I could never go to the United States. But, but you can, and somebody's going to go. These programs have a dedicated slot for a St. Lucian. So somebody from St. Lucia is going to go. So it might as well be you. This is really what students need at this point in time. So, of course, any of you watching right now, this is the point in time to make your way over here, to reach out, follow on the social media. So you are at the phase where you're going to be planning and you have the people right here and the resources to help you out. And I think one of the major issues, too, is that we miss out on opportunities because we are just not aware of it we don't know it's there mm -hmm. and so again here you guys are that's going to enlighten us because so many people you know like the word on the street when it comes to scholarships exchange programs it's like oh it's only for a certain few or if you know somebody but it's just because generally the public is not aware but now we know no it, you're you're absolutely right we're our job as a public affairs officer my job is to get the word out there about the uh, important programming that we're doing at this point i'm sad to say this is probably where we need to wrap it up i feel like we could go on and on but this is a point where we're going to leave you hanging because you need to reach out now make sure you follow the social media you're seeing it up on the screen and of course the contact is here for you so reach out i want to thank you as well mr rodriguez for taking the time out to enlighten us this morning and the last thing too let's just let them know the opening hours so of course we who are you know lucky enough to be right here know when we can come and visit absolutely they are open at, here at the uh, college from nine till about four um and they're also they also do um by appointment so you can get a little bit of advising if you want something specific just set up an appointment with lindell who's our local representative all right well you know what i think our go-to phrase to close off the morning will be when in doubt come visit education usa center right here up at the sir arthur lewis community college so we're looking forward to see you soon and hopefully some more exciting things coming up Absolutely. Thank you and have a great day. All right. Bye, guys. So this wraps up our Thursday together. So it's family time as always. And I hope that you enjoyed that. So we brought you people from all over. But at the end of the day, it's all about coming together. It's all about knowledge. It's all about being empowered. And of course, it's all about this morning. So I want to thank you for staying locked on and staying loyal. And I am Chayla Mendes, of course, wishing you an amazing day. And of course, my only advice for you is when in doubt, power dress and i have to big up hobbies for that thank you very much as well and there is a super special sale going on right now so make sure that you don't miss out on all the good stuff so with that said go out be amazing everybody thank you again for being part of my family and i'll see you for our free up friday tomorrow mm -hmm.